Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, let's talk Marvel's bizarre decisions over Spider-Man. That's the uh, mail we have. I want to throw out, um, let's see. I, I think a lot of you will disagree with this statement and maybe it, it you know, invalidates the rest of this video. Uh, but I don't hate the Zeb Wells run of Spider-Man. I don't like Paul, 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 Paul. I don't like Paul. I don't like uh, that character. I don't like they're, they're doing with MJ. I don't really like the relationship. I don't like how Peter Parker, Spider-Man, seems to be in the backseat of his own book. Even in the recent gang war issues, um, you know, She-Hulk's in there. She-Hulk is the one doing the work. It's, it feels like more of a She-Hulk book, and Spider-Man is the guest star. And that's how a lot of these issues have read, that uh, the, you know, the writer, the people involved have Spider-Man as the supporting cast in the Spider-Man book. And I just, I'm, I'm waiting for a scene where Spider-Man can actually be heroic, where he can actually do something big. Uh, feels like we haven't had that in quite a long time. By the way, saying that, you might say, well, but you said he didn't mind the book. I, compared right now to the absolute destruction and damage going on with the X-Men title, um, I think that's, when I, when I put one against the other, and I, I struggle massively with, uh, with those books, I think. The X-Men is doing severe damage. Spider-Man is not living up to its potential. That's kind of how I would put the thing. But anyway, let's read this mail. And again, I, I think a lot of you have very passionate feelings about this current run of Spider-Man. Um, I, I hear you. I understand. I share a lot of the same opinions. It doesn't cause me the uh, absolute brain damage and pain that uh, the X-Men books do. But, but there you have it. So the Dear Perch. In the years following One More Day... Marvel has made some rather bizarre decisions with Spider-Man. Whether it be Superior, Parker Inc., or the current Wells stuff, it's clear that Marvel has no idea what to do with him other than gimmick storylines. I've said things similar to this over the last couple of years in emails to you, but I want to dedicate a full email to just how weird from a character standpoint the current run is. We get things that are just strange to see in a main Spider-Man title, such as time dilation and recurring limbo appearances, Marvel has no idea what to do with Spider-Man that actually makes sense for the character. No normal person would go look at the Paul storyline and think, this is a wise decision by people who are good at their jobs. It can't be that hard to come up with ideas for Spider-Man. He has dozens, if not hundreds, of obscure villains that a competent writer could use in a manner that both tells an entertaining story while building up minor villains. At this point, it just feels like Marvel's been running from the damage of One More Day has done to the character, by going into gimmick storylines that take our minds off of it by dangling a shiny carrot for us. That's MJ's ass. Anyway, or as, uh, well, who's a writer? I think it was Jed McKay. Or uh, a dump truck ass. Anyway. Um, while the uh, Wells run hasn't been good because this run has reopened that wound. Um, so that's an L. I, I think, uh, so if I'm really dissecting Spider-Man, this is what I would do if I was editorial and the writer and everything i i think you know you take a look at as i mentioned before this current gang war storyline and i think it's a, a good opportunity to have a spider-man book first of all spider-man's done gang war before there's been the the rose trying to take over in these different factions i mean this isn't a new idea but it's one that fits spider-man pretty well it's street level but you get to bring in a bunch of crazy villains and uh, you have spider-man kind of trapped in the middle of you know a bunch of bad guys and it's it's a good, it's a good moment for Spider-Man because he gets to be heroic while simultaneously also dealing with this insanity and the fact that, you know, a different type of hero, like say the Punisher would just look at this and say, you know, now it's time for me to go sit on the sidelines and eat some popcorn and watch these uh, gang leaders all kill each other off and take care of things. You got Spider-Man out there having to really deal with that great power, great responsibility aspect of him which is, uh, you know, I need to try and stop this because a lot of innocents get hurt, even though there's a lot of bad people who get hurt as well. I'm, I'm a hero. I'm supposed to, you know, try and save the, the people in the world, even if, if it's at a small level. So I think the Gang War storyline is a good one for him. And I think that it's uh, the, the balance of Spider-Man is to do kind of street level, because that's what the character is, but one step up, not 50 steps up. So every now and then you want to get Spider-Man into a situation that's way over his head. He can't possibly, you know, beat. And either he finds a way or that's when you bring in the Fantastic Four to help him out or something like that. But that's that's the perfect Spider-Man. And so certain things like, uh, you know, Doc Ock take over his mind and you get the spear Spider-Man. Um, that's 
that that makes the whole thing a little bit wackier than it needs to be. Um, but that storyline, for example, is infinitely superior to the Parker Inc. storyline, where Peter Parker is like a tech billionaire. That is a terrible, terrible idea because that that takes him out of his element and, and what he's doing. And it's just he's not meant to be Tony Stark. It's just it was weird or wrong. It was a complete misfire from the very beginning. And so to me, that that Parker Inc. storyline was far more damaging than Doc Ock swaps brains, more or less. I mean, that's it's goofy, but at least that more or less kind of fits with certain aspects of him. I think that the one more day thing, I, again, it you, you, a lot of uh, the attention goes into why it's breaking up the marriage and you know, Marvel's excuse that you need to have the character be relatable and all the rest of this kind of stuff, which was a dumb excuse. And I think that that fell apart, you know, clearly uh, from the beginning. But you you take a look at uh, you take a look at one more day and, and for a moment, don't focus on MJ and focus on the other aspect of this whole thing, which is the deal with Mephesto and hell and souls and restoring people to life and all the rest of that stuff. And when you look at it from that perspective, it makes it even more clear that that was a dumb way to go. Spider-Man doesn't work well when you get into a lot of that other bullshit. It, it, you don't, you don't need Spider-Man dealing with cosmic powers. That you can do it. There's been some elements where, you know, Spider-Man had the uh, Captain in a Universe uh, powers, and you, you get different things where he gets a taste of it. But when you're taking a major part of his status quo in his life and you're wrapping it into that, it doesn't feel true to the character. So the removal of MJ from and, and kind of this entire restructuring of his status quo um, made the whole character less relatable. I mean, put it this way. If you were Marvel editorial and you did the decision of, hey, Spider-Man happily married, you know, is too hard for our readers to figure out, uh, which, again, as we've talked about a million times, I don't think it's true in the slightest, but okay, if we're going to run with that premise, then the way that they're going to go about, you know, ending that, the, the most relatable thing you could do is have him get a divorce, have it, or have Peter just, uh, whatever, just have them get a divorce where MJ can't take the heroing, I, whatever it happens to be, that would be the most relatable way to break up the marriage. Not that you should do that, but that would be relatable. Having him make a pact with the devil to save the life of his aging aunt uh, is completely, completely off. So that's, you know, that, that the, the entire premise blows up at that state. So anyway, I, I think that, uh, you know, if you look at Spider-Man storylines like Craven's Last Hunt, it definitely involved aspects of the mystical and supernatural, but it still worked as kind of a street level one step up from street level, which is where Spider-Man works best, my opinion. Um, you know, I, I do think the other thing you said in the mail, which is true, is Spider-Man is mired in what a lot of titles are mired in, which is stunt booking, which is we've got to have something, some big, you know, you won't believe what's going to happen next kind of gimmick happening every couple uh, months. And what's bad about that is it, it, kind of eliminates the idea of longevity and instead it gets us into this this world of i mean put it this way the gang war storyline is currently going on as i mentioned before the big problem with it is spider-man seems like a supporting character in his own book but other than that the the this entire gang war you know storyline had subplots a lot building up to it it did a lot of the right things in order to get us to the story it wasn't terrible what they did, I mean, again, a lot of right things happened. The problem is that, you know, you're not, you're not doing much of this for Spider-Man. But other than that, it, it's not bad. It is vastly superior to the weird, you know, Spider-Man takes all of Norman Sin's uh, stuff, or uh, Spider-Man is sucked into a other dimension by a totem creature, and time has changed, and MJ's now married to another guy. Like, all this, all that stuff is the, the weird bullshit insanity that just doesn't help the book. So lean more into that, that material. I, I think the stunt booking encourages the writers to create kind of outlandish, can you top this like plots that rarely fit the character well, and also 
they don't encourage people to just buy month in, month out. It encourages kind of trade sales or, you know, let's buy this one stunt, but they get tiring. And eventually you look at it and go, this, this character, how could he still be surviving from that? I don't even understand how this is still happening. It just, it, it sets a lot of the wrong things in motion. So a Spider-Man, the funny thing is, I don't think it's a hard character to, to do. I think it's easy to get Spider-Man right. You just have to uh, respect a little bit of kind of what the core of the character is and, you know, work accordingly. Like the, the letter writer mentioned, there's hundreds of villains to choose from, like hundreds. There is uh, no shortage of subplots and things you can do. You do not need to, you know, tap into the 80 Spider-Man of the multiverse or life ending things. People love Spider-Man books where he's like, you know, he's he Electro is uh, rampaging around and putting a lot of people at risk. I mean, you could do a six issue storyline where the Rhino or somebody like that takes a bunch of hostages and Spider-Man is uh, got to figure out kind of a little diehard style how to save them without uh you know kill without without everybody dying i mean you could you could have this story go people would love it like i mean just picture that you get a you big, get a big office building get a villain you know electro is maybe a better option you get you get somebody like him and he's got a bunch of the hostages wired up to i don't know metal handcuffs or something connected to him and he's holding the other end and he's gonna basically fry you know 400 people in this building if the city doesn't give in to the demands and, uh, you know, you, you put some goofy plot device there around why a telepath can't just shut him down or whatever. And Spider-Man's like, got, I mean, have Aunt May be one of the hostages or Mary Jane or somebody like that. So there's a little bit of a personal stake and have Spider-Man go in there and try and save them using stealth and, and figure out, I, I mean, look, it's not, it's not a genius idea. Like I said, it's been done before. That's diehard, but that's what people want out of Spider-Man. They just want something with some good tension where he gets to be a hero. They don't need him, you know, fighting the spider totem in multiverse Earth 553 and, you know, pining for MJ who's off with some other dimension. Like, uh, fuck that. Anyway, what do you think? What do you want out of Spider-Man? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for listening.